The KBO Breeze is the latest model from KBO. This brightly colored commuter e-bike has got some serious power without an overbearing and massive frame, like other brands have that put out a similar speed. It's a full-size bike that can deliver a decent range, good hill climbing ability, and doesn't weigh a ton. It's also competitively priced at $1,499, placing it in the same category as Ride One Up, Rad Mission, and 10 ways. All quality e-bikes I've reviewed, so let's see how the Breeze holds up starting off with a speed test. The Breeze comes with a 500 watt high speed brushless geared motor in the rear wheel, powered by a 48 volt 16 amp hour Samsung battery that has a battery level readout, USB port, and can be removed with the two keys the bike comes with. It can be charged while in the bike or on the go, which takes five to six hours. The Breeze is rated up to 20 miles per hour on the highest of the five pedal assist modes it comes with. Well, this is the speed test. Speed mode one first. Got my speed app open, full battery. KBO says it's rated up to 20 miles per hour, so let's see if that's true. For pedal assist one, I got nine miles per hour. Mode two, 14. Mode three, 18. Mode four, 21. And pedal assist level five, also 21. Here's the difference in speed from pedal assist one, three, and five. 21 miles per hour makes the Breeze the third fastest in all the bikes I've reviewed in this price range. Now let's see how long it takes to reach that speed in an acceleration test. The Breeze comes with a half twist throttle, so I was curious to know which was fastest, pedal assist 5 or throttle. And as you can see, they are pretty much neck and neck with straight throttle just barely faster, reaching 21 miles per hour in 13.18 seconds. Here's a look at the difference in acceleration between pedal assist 1, 3, and 5. And now pedal assist 5 and straight throttle. Now the throttle can be used in unison with the pedal assist and will always give full power up to 21 miles per hour. So this is the range test. I've got a full battery, pedal assist level 5, tracking app open, start workouts. Let's see how far I can get. While I'm on the range test, let me tell you all the things I liked and didn't like about the Breeze, starting off with the look. Well, one thing for sure, you're definitely not going to get hit by a car on this thing. This is bright and vibrant. You can see this from miles away. It's got to be one of the brightest bikes I've reviewed so far. If you don't want to stand out as much, KBO offers the Breeze in black. I like the look of the frame. Usually when the battery is outside of the frame, it's kind of bulky and ugly. This is more slim and slender and looks pretty nice with the bike. I thought the black lettering, front and rear mud flaps, water bottle holder, and rear rack complemented the bike very well. The bike is fairly quiet too. I'm just casually pedaling, going 21.7 miles per hour. And I'll just kind of be quiet here and let you listen to it. It's got pretty wide wheels for the frame too. So the handling and stability is, is very nice. There's no rattling, shaking, or vibrating that I sometimes feel in other models. There was a part of the range test where I came down a steep section of the canyon. I had the bike up to 35 miles per hour on a not so smooth road. It was paved, but hadn't had work done in years. So there were potholes, cracks, and rough sections. The bike handled the road very well for going 35 miles per hour, but that's as fast as I dared go. It did start to wobble a little. Definitely not designed to go that fast. I'm loving the front suspension. It is one of the nicer ones I've felt for a bike in this price range. I do wish they had some sort of spring suspension for the seat or just a heavily padded or bigger seat. I've been riding this for a couple miles now and it's starting to get a little sore. The front fork suspension can be adjusted and locked if you like, and the seat isn't that bad. I did the entire range test in a pair of lightweight, non-padded shorts. There is a good spread on the handlebars. It fits the frame of the bike. I've seen these types of grips before on a couple different brands. Uh, they're not my favorite, but they are fairly comfortable. The brake levers have a nice rubber pad on the outside which is kind of nice, I, I like that, it's a good touch. It's got a seven speed Shimano system. All the gears shift very nice and fast. I just lost my first battery bar, 9.12 miles with a 33 minute ride time. So it's kicking butt so far. I like the pedal assist. From a standstill, it kicks in with about a half a revolution. And then when you're going, it takes about maybe one and a half, two revolutions for it to kick in, which is pretty standard for a bike in this price range. That's kind of what I've felt with other brands. Okay, I just lost my second battery bar. I've gone 15.67 miles with an hour and 12 minute ride time. And averaging 20, 21 miles per hour, haven't had any power drop. 
I like the display screen. It looks modern and nice and fairly big. And there's a cool feature at the very top left. There's an energy uh, readout. So it lets you know how much power you're using. So if you want to extend the range, then you can kind of use that to monitor or manage your power. And right when you hit the on button, which is that M in the middle, the bike turns on. If you press the M button, it will cycle through different options like voltage readout, time, and max speed. The plus and minus buttons change the pedal assist up to five and down to zero. If you press them together, you enter the settings where you can change the units, top speed, and reset the odometer. And if the plus button is held for three seconds, it will turn on the bike's front and rear lights and the LCD screen light. Well, I've just lost two battery bars at the same time. I've gone 22.72 miles with an hour and a half ride time. I've got a flat stretch of road. I wanted to shut the power off and do a no power test. I'm in seventh gear on the flat road going 14 miles per hour and I am feeling some good resistance. I'm going to lower it down and oh, there we go. Uh, you can definitely uh, ride this without any power. I'm getting a little bit of a burn, but not nearly as bad as I thought I was going to. Once I got back home, I had about a full battery bar left and ended up with 27.96 miles. If I would have kept on going till the bike died, I bet I could have gotten around 33 miles, which is at the low end of the rating. KBO rates the breeze from 30 up to 55. I was happy with 33 miles on pedal assist 5. I had the bike going as fast as it could, and I made a couple dozen stops to take pictures and take in the views. Elevation gain was also impressive at almost 1900 feet. This is a bike that can go the distance in hilly terrain. Now this is what you can expect if you're around my weight of 185 pounds. The bike is rated to carry a rider 5'4 to 6'4 and up to 300 pounds and is one of the lighter bikes in this price range at 62 pounds. If you take the battery out, it will drop that weight down to 52. Now 33 miles is the second highest range out of all the bikes I reviewed in this category. And I took this bike up the hilliest terrain as well. This is the hill test. This is the same hill I've been using the past few videos, about a quarter mile long. 10 to 11% grade at the steepest. I've got my speed up open. Can I crank this up to pedal assist five and see how it does? So far, so good. Averaging 16 miles an hour. Down to 14 on the uh, first tricky part. And that's as low as I've gotten, 14 miles an hour. Okay, starting to climb up the uh, hardest part down to 13 miles per hour. I can hear that motor singing a little bit louder down to 12, holding at 12. Let's see if it goes down. Still at 12. Feeling a little bit more resistance in the pedals, down to 11, back up to 12. And we're just about over the top, 13. And there we go. The breeze is rated up to a 15% hill. Based on my experience, I'd say that's about right. I felt it had plenty of power for the hill I tested it out on. The Breeze comes with Tektro Aries 180mm front and rear disc brakes. Here's the stopping distance from pedal assist 1, 3, and 5. It took 12 feet to stop from 21 miles per hour on a flat road. The brakes are nice, no squeaking or pulsating. The KBO Breeze comes with a 2 year warranty, can be ridden in light rain, and has a flick bell. Overall, here's what you can expect from the KBO Breeze if you're around my weight of 185 pounds. A top speed of 21 miles per hour for both pedal assist 5 and straight throttle. A decent acceleration taking just under 14 seconds to reach 21 miles per hour. A range rating of 30 to 55 miles. I got 33 miles on pedal assist level 5 averaging 20 to 21 miles per hour with around a dozen stops along the way. It's got good hill climbing ability slowing down to 11 miles per hour up 11% slope. Not the fastest or slowest for hills, kind of right in the middle. And brakes aren't bad, stopping me in 12 feet from 21 miles per hour on a flat road. I thought the Breeze was a solid bike for $1,500. I like the sleek and slim look. It has very good power for the size and the best front fork suspension I've seen so far in this price range. If you want more info, I've got the link in the description. Also, be sure to check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com, for all my reviews sorted by price and capability. As always, thanks for checking out my content. I do appreciate it. Be sure to hit that like button before you go, and don't forget to subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.